non-essential workers need to stay home. A Steve Bannon last night, after characterizing the president as an unserious candidate, said this on his own radio show. The president of the United States is a great man. You know I support him day in and day out. I stand with the president. This book by Michael Wolff is, is just... Trash. Americans be concerned about the president's mental fitness. You said that the media are like drug addicts. Drug addicts sometimes have good days. The press never gets better. They keep getting worse. The Powerball jackpot surging overnight to more than half a billion dollars. No one won last night, so you still have a chance. If you live in the Northeast, there's a good chance that if you've got kids in your house, they have the day off yeah. or at least a delayed start. It is a lousy weather day throughout the Northeast right. uh, and the Mid-Atlantic. We got the call, the robocall last night. Uh, you're Did free. You? Do whatever you want. Uh, oh, that was, so is school, it? Right. Schools closed? No, for me, I had to go to work, but for school, school was closed. They do a lot of preemptive closings. In my day, it's they used idea. to get, when the kids were stuck in the snow, they realized we should shut it off the teachers or alone in the classroom. Uh, yeah. Now, like, they wait, because I guess insurance reasons. Uh, uh, plus, so many people need to have daycare and child care. You hate to have the kid at home suddenly okay. hate when the parents are at work. Right, but even worse, you hate to have the kids on the road in those school buses. Let's talk about this uh, extreme weather that's happening across the country. Right, I'll take it from here, Ainsley. Okay, you can just sit do. back if you don't mind. Uh, this is an extreme weather alert. Got a massive storm. It's hammering the East Coast. It's dumping snow and unleashing hurricane force winds. This, got a, this is a live look now at Bedford, New Hampshire. It's getting battered by fast winds, heavy snow. McDonald's open. The forecast only getting worse by the minute. More than 3,000 flights have already been canceled or delayed nationwide, and that number is expected to climb. Charleston International Airport, South Carolina, shut down because of ice covering the runway. More than 50,000 people from Florida up to North Carolina don't even have power this morning. The National Guard in Virginia is geared up. They're ready to go out and help. And Janice Dean is live on our plaza where the snow is falling. Janice, how's it feeling out there? Really cold, right? It's cold. It's going to get colder. And that's one of the problems of this is once this storm is said and done, it'll be out of here by this time tomorrow. The temperatures are going to bottom out. I mean, we're going to be dealing with lows here in the New York City area of minus one on Saturday. So I'm concerned concerned with folks that are without power after the storm system leaves. They really need to get warm. So here it is right now, really from the Delmarva up towards Maine. Blizzard warnings in effect, and we have upped those snow totals from this time yesterday. Indeed, we're going to see probably four to eight inches here in New York City. Eastern Long Island could see upwards of a foot or more, maybe 18 inches, along with the city of Boston. Uh, so you can see the visibility has been reduced. People are urged to stay off the roadways. Non-essential workers should stay home today because you can't really travel travel at all with visibility reduced like this. And then the criteria for a blizzard is winds in excess of 35 miles per hour for an extended length of time uh, above and beyond three hours. And that's exactly what's going to happen. In some cases, look at this storm system. We could, we could see winds in excess of hurricane force winds along the coast. So not only the winds and the snow, but we're going to see beach erosion and even coastal flooding with this. I think I read somewhere, guys, that the central pressure of this storm could be equivalent to what Sandy was, what hurricane Sandy was when it approached the Northeast a few years ago. So there are your blizzard warnings. Again, conditions are going to be terrible uh, throughout the day today. That's why people are urged to stay home and just That's watch right. us outside mm -hmm. for That's you. Right. Good idea. And of course, the lower the pressure, the worse the storm. Absolutely. All right, uh, Janice, thank you very much. Thanks, Meanwhile, let's talk about a blizzard of headlines today. It's all about a brand new book that actually launches next week. It's by uh, Michael Wolf. The new book is called Fire and Fury. I'm sure you've heard uh, plenty of salacious details about it already. What's interesting is uh, Guru unloads on Trump White House, according to the New York Post. The Guru is Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon was served papers last night by uh, President Trump's lawyers saying you got to cease and desist because you wrote you signed a non-disclosure agreement and now this morning what's interesting is axios is reporting that apparently trump lawyers are considering suing the author of the book 
Michael Wolff. But did they let him in the White House and give him access where he was seen often and early, early and often with Steve Bannon, giving him many interviews? Steve Bannon did pick up the phone and call others and say, cooperate with Michael Wolff because he's writing about the first 100 days. And then I guess Michael Wolff said, let's make it the first 200 days. And then he comes out and puts out this book. Steve Bannon has not asked, uh, uh, said that he has a problem with any characterization that's been released so far yeah. in this book. However, Michael Barack. Uh, who is a long time Tom Barack, long time friend of the president, is quoted as calling him basically. Uh, uh, says it's not accurate. Yeah, yeah. says he's uh, 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 stupid and horrible things. Says that is not accurate. Katie Walsh says I am not quoted accurately, but Steve Bannon is not. Well, keep in then. mind, Steve Bannon was fired from the White House. President was classy and didn't say anything negative about him. Now Steve Bannon is. So now the president is firing back. He said Steve Bannon has nothing to do with me or my presidency when he was. Fired Fired. He not only lost his job, he lost his mind. Steve was a staffer who worked for me after I had already won by won the nomination by defeating 17 candidates. Steve doesn't represent my base. He's only in it for himself. You know, the Mercers, who are big financiers of President Trump and a big backer of Steve Bannon, have made their choice. The Mercers have cut off Steve Bannon. They, they will not finance any of his efforts or support any of the Steve Bannon uh, uh, candidates like Roy Moore. And the question is, what does Steve Bannon get out? of yeah, why disparaging would the president in a way in which all his critics do. What does he, I just kept asking myself this last night, what does he get out of this? Well, we know, what, know. We know what the author gets out of it. A lot of books are going to be It's going to be a bestseller. Sold. Yeah, it sure. will be. It is right now. It's number one on Amazon. It doesn't come out till next week. Steve Bannon, however, after apparently he was uh, served the papers that said you, you can't talk about the White House or the campaign because you signed documents to that effect, he had kind things to say about the president <laughs> last night on his radio show across the street from us. The president of the United States is a great man. You know I support him day in and day out, whether going through the country given the Trump miracle speech or on the show or on the website. So I don't think you have to worry about that. But I appreciate the kind words. The kind words. A great man. Michael Caputo is actually on the campaign. He was a senior advisor. He says this book is trash. I stand with the president. This book by Michael Wolff is is just trash. The comments about, in particular, about Don Jr. in that meeting in Trump Tower in June of 2016, they were, you know, I thought I was really disturbed by those comments. I think that that causes grief for the president and this presidency uh, in the context of the ongoing Russia investigations. And uh, I don't blame the president one bit for going off like he did. Don Jr., he does say in the book, says that when the president won the election, he looked white as a ghost. And Melania, according to the book, uh, cried afterwards. And he's talking about, and that is Michael Caputo. He's talking about the meeting that happened in Trump Tower before Steve Bannon was even on board uh, that took place between a Russian that said that he had, they had some uh, interesting information so, on Hillary Clinton. So media who doesn't like him. Uh, they they're running with us. Of course, this is their headline on every single network this morning. They're loving us. But when you look at it, it's just a salacious book. It's so tabloid. It's a book about what this guy who was fired was saying about what was happening inside the White House. Do you really care? Write us and let us know if you care about that or if you care about what the economy looks like, all these jobs, people yeah, are getting bonuses. You're not hearing so much. Uh, no, about you're those not. Stories. Not on not on not on those. Uh, left just, leaning media that's right. last thing I'd like to say the le one thing I just want to say the one way he was characterized I could absolutely tell you is wrong the president doesn't like to read briefing books he can't get through when they talk about the Constitution he didn't get through it when he sits down with world leaders he doesn't stay there he gets bored I from personally is just I've heard just the exact opposite one on one he could go on forever he likes the briefing pages to understand before he goes in in fact when he was just a, uh, a prospective candidate he used to walk around in an old fashioned way with folders like this and I one time asked him, I go, what's in there? He goes, just news stories from around the country and different policy ideas. So I thought to myself, wow, I thought on his device he would carry it. He loves paging through different stories and different ideas and different columns. Well, this, well, and he characterize him as somebody who doesn't read anything. Part well, of the book says that he didn't even know who the president didn't know who John Boehner would it was, which is ridiculous because John Boehner uh, was the Speaker of the House. The president tweeted about him, talked about him all the time, played golf with him. So some are wondering whether or not parts of it are simply wrong. And Ainsley, to your earlier point about the mainstream media, how they were whipped up. If you were watching yesterday uh, the press briefing at about 3.30 with Sarah Sanders, I mean, people were talking about, is the president of the United States mentally unhealthy and things like that. It was something to see. So we're going to show it to you. 
Should Americans be concerned about the president's mental fitness that he appears to be speaking so lightly about threats regarding the nuclear button? He is not merely being cavalier with a threat about nuclear war. He's being cavalier in a way that makes him seem demented and deranged. None of this normal, none of this acceptable, none of this frankly stable behavior. Trump needs to be medicated and hospitalized <laughs> at this point, or he is going to just kill all of us. And you know, my feeling is that probably they're getting closer to him in the Mueller investigation. And that's what this is about, a lot of it. And so many of the comments at the top of that were regarding uh, North Korea, you know, mm. my button's bigger than your button. And then the Michael B Wolf Listen, book came out and it hit the fan. The media doesn't get him. The media doesn't get him. They're in New York. They're in L.A. I'm from South Carolina. I understand. I get New York. I understand that. Lots of Democrats in this area. They don't understand this president. But I'm from South Carolina. And I, and, and I get those people. And the people in the South, in the Midwest where you're from, they love this president and they get him because he gets them. And I remember growing up in the South, my dad always said, don't ever throw the first punch. He used to tell my brother this. But when someone punches you, you win. You punch back. And that's what he's doing to this to this dictator in North Korea. So the Southerners, Midwesterners, that's how they were raised. That They understand this president. They get him. You might not like it if you're in, in the North, or you might not like uh, There are a few in the South that don't like it. But that's his mentality. And he understands this country. And so many people in the country feel the same way he does. Right. To be the thing that, and that's a good point. Uh, the thing that people get worried about is he does have the power to destroy half the planet. And they wonder if the tweet is leading us there, what I think people should understand a year in, it's not. It's part of a poll policy decision. Behind him, you got generals and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and he's getting advice from all around, and he is at the tip of the spear, right. where normally you have other people out there doing that. He's actually doing it. This is with North. Ultimately, he's going to be he's going to be judged on this. What's going to happen with North Korea? Are they going to give up those weapons? What's going to happen with Iran? Are they going to overthrow their dictator? What's going to happen with Pakistan? Yeah. Are they going to get the message. Look, the Palestinian Authority, they're going to get the two people. You got to hear this, though. Last night, Mike Huckabee, he was on with Sean Hannity. Listen to what he said. You've said that the media are like drug addicts, and, and I think that's being very unkind to the drug addicts, because I've known a lot of drug addicts, Sean, and a lot of them actually go into rehab and they get better. The press never gets better. They keep getting worse. They, they become more obsessed with the destruction of Donald Trump than they are with the building up of America. This is a president who's had a remarkable year. Oh yeah, he says some things in tweets that drives everybody off the, the ranch, but the truth is our economy's better, our security's better, we're trusted by nations that hated us before and didn't trust us, the Middle East is rapidly changing in a positive way, he's had the guts to stand up for the Iranian people against their autocratic, totalitarian, brutal, terroristic government, and they can't see any of that. Drug addicts sometimes have good days. I just don't know that the media is capable of having a good How day. Well, there's certainly a lot of talk about that this morning on the whole. You go through the channels right now. That's what everybody's <laughs> talking about right now. And it's in the papers. So there you Let go. Let us know what you think. I love to read your emails. So please send them all to us. What we all does, love to read them. When he says negative things about you and doesn't give you interviews, uh, I think a lot of media people, journalists, are reacting emotionally instead of staying to their job. Meanwhile, coming up straight ahead, Dr. Sebastian Gorka worked inside the White House for a long time. He joins us live next. He knows Bannon and he certainly knows the president. And you've never seen a police chase end like this with what? Wait, that's a kiss? Aww. What? Wait. She doesn't look like she wants to be kissing That truck him. was 1995 an hour. Yeah. A cease and desist letter. This morning, President Trump's legal team warning former chief White House strategist Steve Bannon to cease and desist after he blasted, among other people, Don Jr.'s meeting with the Russians as treasonous and unpatriotic in a bombshell book that comes out next week. Yeah, the president's firing back, saying Steve Bannon has nothing to do with me or my presidency. When he was fired, he not only lost his job, he lost his mind. Now that he is on his own, Steve is learning that winning isn't as easy as I make it look. Steve had very little to do with our historic victory. Well, Fox News contributor, former deputy assistant to the president, Dr. Sebastian Gorka's in a tough spot. Friendly with Steve Bannon and extremely, uh, extremely uh, loyal, admire, uh, loyal to the president, and I would say close to the president's family. Dr. Gorka.
Do you have to pick a side in this? Uh, Happy New Year, guys. No, I don't. Uh, I'm on the side of the American Republic and on the side of truth. Uh, You need to know that this guy who wrote this book, and these are accusations not from Steve, but in a book by Michael Wolff, he's a sleazebag. I was asked to talk to him in the White House when he floated around the West Wing, and I refused to talk to this guy. Also, the newspaper that published this story, The Guardian, is the most left-wing gutter press rag in the UK you can imagine. So, no, I'm remain loyal to the president. Uh, Steve has to say whether or not he said these things. He hasn't walked anything back, Dr. Gorka. He had plenty of opportunities. He said nice things on his radio show, but all he had to do was tweet out what you just said, and he didn't. So it (laughs) makes me think that he's accurate because he's been spotted in the office, uh, Michael Wolff has, in the office uh, quite often, and you probably saw him there with Steve Bannon. Yeah. Uh, Look, I saw Wolff, but as I said, I refused to talk to him. But look at the article. There's a long excerpt in the New York magazine published yesterday from the book. It is full of inaccuracies and lies. You've, you've pointed them out already. Steve, you mentioned the, uh, the fact that the president was supposedly unaware of who John Boehner is. It's <laughs> bogus. Right. The president is a vacuum cleaner of information. The idea that he doesn't read stuff. Again, he, he, in his office, when I first met him in New York, he had stacks of pieces yeah. of paper that weren't there for decoration. It's because he was reading them. Mm-hmm. This guy is a hack. How do you think the American people will will respond to this? You think they'll think they'll agree with Sarah Huckabee Sanders? She said it was trashy, tabloid fiction, false. Uh, Do you think America do you think they'll buy into this book or believe this book? And what do they really care about? No, I, I think, you know, the, the people who will buy into this book are the people who hate the president already. And that doesn't matter because the president had a crushing year. Think about what happened, whether it's the economy, whether it's ISIS, whether it's the southern border, revitalizing NATO, the Asia trip. It's just, you know, the successes are building upon each other in a way that the media cannot deny. So what do they do? Generate falsehood. So I think, you know, the people who voted for this president will keep on believing in the Make America Great Again agenda. And that's great because 2018 is going to be a fabulous year. All right. Uh, Dr. Gorka, thank you very much for joining us live. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dr. Gorka. If you want to get an unemployment check, should you have to get drug tested first? We're going to debate it next. The Trump administration is looking to bring back and expand on a rule that Congress repealed last year, which requires drug testing before you get your unemployment benefits. This is unemployment benefits claims are at a 17 year record low, decreasing by the thousands during Trump's first year in office. So what does this mean for you, the taxpayer and those that are looking to hire new employees here to debate? This is founder and president of the Center for Urban Renewal and Education, Star Parker, and former Democratic Missouri state representative and founder of Pine Street. Street Strategies, Don Calloway. Thank you both for being with us. Good morning, Ainsley. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, Don. Star, I'll start with you. What do you think about this? Do you agree with the president? Should we drug test people before we give them unemployment benefits? I think it's up to the American people if they think that the people that receive their tax benefits should be drug tested. What the Trump administration and the Republican-led Congress is attempting to do is allow for more flexibility in the states for businesses and for the state themselves to decide whether they can get people back to employment. You know, let's face it, in particular, as states are starting to legalize marijuana, we have a new dilemma. Marijuana brings out that lazy in us, and one of the obligations of the person receiving even the unemployment benefit, is that they're going to be actively looking for work. So yes, I think that uh, it might be healthy for the Labor Department to decide uh, in their new assessments of rules that drug testing will be permissible. Okay, Don, what do you think about it? You know, I disagree with my friend Starr here. For those of us who participate in the state and local government space, this is a concept that's not new. We see uh, conservative legislatures or administrations consistently moving to place either roadblocks in front of public assistance or take away benefits on the back end. And ultimately, it, it's, it's something that probably has some constitutional hurdles. In 1972, Goldberg versus Kelly decided that uh, uh, unemployment and public assistance benefits are property within the meaning of the due process clause and have to be treated as 
such. So it's possibly got some constitutional hurdles. But secondly, we continue to vilify and villainize poor people and set them aside as a class in a way that we don't do anyone else in this country who receives public benefits. We just passed a massive tax cut that inures primarily to the benefit of high-end corporations and high net worth individuals. We don't see them being submitted to drug testing or any type of proposal of that nature. So frankly, it probably has some constitutional hurdles, but it's definitely uh, unchristian-like and definitely just probably morally bankrupt. But Don, you're okay. I mean, you're waking up at 726 on the East Coast. You're waking up this morning. You're yeah. getting taxes taken out. Every time you see a paycheck, you're okay with those tax dollars going to people who are using that money instead of putting food on their families, uh, on their families' tables. You're okay with them using it to buy drugs if they do that? Listen, I'm, first of all, that's an assumption that, that poor people are doing that. It's frankly just not. Well, that's the why you have the These testing. These are not poor that's people we're talking about. Wait a minute, secondly, let's leave the no, poor no, 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 out of this. Unemployment start, benefits are for people that have start, been employed if I could, if I and now they're not. If I could finish, but secondly, you know, Ainsley, I'm okay with it if we treat everyone else who receives government benefits in the same way. We're not drug testing CEOs for the massive tax cuts we just gave to corporations. We're not drug testing high net worth individuals for the massive tax breaks that we all just received and we hope to see under the, uh, the next time we file our taxes. So, you know what, let's stop setting aside unemployed and people who are down on their luck to receive disparate treatment. And yes, this is a hurdle and this is primarily to the injury of poor people. So let's not, let's not act like this is not who this affects. All right, Star, I'll give you the last word. Businesses drug test already. In fact, states drug test already. So what we're allowing for is more flexibility in the states and in businesses to decide that if someone is unemployed, that we need to get them employed again. And drugs stand in the way of that oftentimes. Listen, let's, let's treat everyone who receives public benefits the same, regardless of their uh, employment status or, or income. I don't status. know that the unemployment check people want to be considered welfare dependents. Uh, this is a very different issue. And the it's, Labor it's, Department needs right. that flexibility uh, to be able to change the rules. Don, I will say you talk talked about these you know, CEOs of companies. I'm going to teach my daughter the only way you're becoming a CEO is if you stay away from drugs. Hey, don't do drugs. I, <laughs> I tell agree. my boys every day. All right. Thanks so much, Star hey, and Donna. Now. I appreciate it. The president firing back at Steve Bannon for trash talking his family, threatening a lawsuit. Dana Lash, the host of The Dana Show, on that subject next. And this just in, how the president plans to plug the leaks coming out of his White House. He's not going to stop for us, which I understand. We're in a blizzard. He's going home. I hope you make it, sir. Please stay safe. Woo, it is, uh, it is crazy out here. This man, the bravest man I've seen, that's for sure. I wonder if those are snow tires. On I don't bike. think so. I know, Schwinn? Uh, a man <laughs> that was a huffy. in oh. Ocean City, Maryland, braving the elements to ride his bicycle on the way home. Right. We don't know whose trees those are, but the area expected to get hit by eight inches of snow. That is a live look at Ocean City, Maryland right now. Not a good time to walk on the boardwalk for a romantic stroll. No, indeed. Uh, that, that same winter monster storm marching up the East Coast right now, impacting people all the way from the Mid-Atlantic through the Northeast. Todd Pyro is live in Islip, New York, where snow is already coming down pretty hard there. Todd? Well, it was. Doesn't yeah, look guys, like, good morning it, to you. It is right yeah, you know, it's falling right now, definitely coming down pretty hard. And as the sun is up right now, you can see that road right there is really starting to get covered. The good news is we haven't seen a ton of cars. People do seem to be heeding the warning to avoid the roads on a day like this. Now, what makes this storm so unique? You've heard Dana say it all morning long. It's not the snow. It's the fact that it is so cold out here and going to get colder as the week progresses, but also the wind. It is extremely windy, very blizzard-like conditions here. Another thing that makes this storm unique is the path, where it came from. This storm started in Florida, and they typically don't get snow in Florida, as you might imagine, because people go there to get out of the snow. But Florida got snow. South Carolina and Georgia got snow. Boston is about to get snow later on today. They're expecting extremely heavy blizzard-like conditions there. If you can avoid going out, please do so. And also, airports are an absolute mess. One thing we want to touch back upon is the flag. I tried my best. I could not get the flag because there is a pulling 
pulley system that is broken. I do not have a key to get to the flag. And also, the top, um, I was going to unhook it, but the top hook is a little bit too high for me. So hopefully, anybody watching this who has the key at this business here on Sunrise Highway, please get over here because we do not want old glory on the ground. Please, please, please get over here soon. Well, you gave it the old team try. Todd, thank you very much for trying to fix that. Thank you, Todd. Let's hand it over to Jillian. She has some more headlines for us. Jillian? That's right. Good Thursday morning. And we begin with a Fox News alert, guys. Plugging the leaks. The White House now banning employees from using personal phones inside the West Wing. Starting tomorrow, the Trump administration aides will only be allowed to conduct business on their government-issued devices. In a statement, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders writes, quote, The security and integrity of the technology systems at the White House is a top priority for the Trump administration. And therefore, starting next week, the use of all personal devices for both guests and staff will no longer be allowed in the West Wing. The NFL's TV ratings taking a historic nosedive to close out 2017. Players kneeling during the national anthem could be to blame after months of fans boycotting and the president slamming league owners. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say get that son of a off the field right now out he's fired The overall average NFL audience tanking 10% in 2017, according to new data from USA Today. That comes after the league already saw a decline of 8% the year before. Okay, so we're giving the phrase hot pursuit a whole new meaning, I tell you. A couple getting in one last kiss after leading police on a two-hour chase. The woman is accused of stealing a U-Haul truck, then leading officers on a pursuit through Los Angeles. But a blown tire ended the whole thing. Police breaking up the passion by tasing the man and tackling the woman. Both were arrested and treated for drugs. One bar owner may need a serious drink after someone stole a $1.3 million bottle of vodka. Danish police looking for this man seen fleeing the bar with what some say is the world's most expensive bottle of vodka. The bottle is made from gold and silver with a diamond embellished cap. The one-of-a-kind bottle was uninsured and the only item stolen from the bar. But guys, it just makes you wonder how good the vodka really is if the bottle's what's so expensive. Right. Is it Absolute or Tito's? <laughs> right I, heard, I heard pop-off. Bangers oh, is it pop up, right? <laughs> All right, Jillian, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Jillian. All right, uh, meanwhile, let's bring in Dana Lash, a nationally syndicated radio host of Dana's show. Hey, Dana, good morning good to morning. you. Good morning. Good morning to you all. Well, we've got uh, lousy weather here in New York, and there's a storm going on uh, on all the television channels right now and all the newspapers. Everybody's talking about this new book by Michael Wolf that comes out next week. And uh, it quotes, among other people, Steve Bannon, who was always a trusted aide, everybody thought, to President Donald Trump. And now, you know, he's had some very unkind things to say about people in the White House and a whole bunch of other people have as well. What does uh, what's your perspective on how people should look at at this book. Well, first off, I'm not surprised at all that this has happened. In fact, I'm actually kind of shocked that it took this long for Steve Bannon to turn on President Trump and the administration because that's who Steve Bannon is. He's an opportunist. Mm -hmm. This is an individual who likes to take credit for other people's success. He glommed on to Sarah Palin in the early days of her campaign. He glommed on to Andrew Breitbart. He glommed on to Ted Cruz. And he did the same thing with President Trump. He catches people as they're ascending or after they've already ascended and then tries to claim credit for all of their accomplishments. So I've known the man for a long time. Uh, I have a history there. And so this is something that I, not just myself, but other former colleagues who uh, were also there at the same time who used to work for him, we've all seen this. Uh, but to this point, though, as to, I know a lot of people are talking about whether or not they can trust Michael Wolf, and uh, this guy seems to be untrustworthy and unethical. Steve Bannon trusted him enough to go and blab to him. Steve Bannon trusted him enough to let him in the inner sanctum and encourage other people within the Trump administration to talk to this guy. Steve Bannon claims to be a warrior against the media, but this is a guy who repeatedly has gone to the mainstream media to leak stories and to blab about the administration in an effort to undermine the president's foreign policy decisions. Now think about this. A guy who's supposed to be so strategic and so calculating actually robbed the president here as we go into 2018 of being able to start 2018 by discussing his huge victory with tax reform and how this is going to have to be the 
message that Republicans need to cling to for victories in the midterm right. elections coming up just several months, you know, in a, several months in the future here. And Steve Bannon robbed the president of this talking point by once again making it all about him. He ran to the American Prospect, if we, let's not forget that, another progressive <clears throat> publication wherein he blabbed to a progressive reporter in an effort to undermine the president's foreign policy on North Korea. So I don't think that he can claim to be a warrior against the media when he uses it for his purposes continually to try to undermine the administration. Steve Bannon is all about Steve Bannon and will always only ever be about Steve Bannon. Well, the only one thing I, I would not know is that if he does have a part of the base, will he take that with him since he's now drawn sides between him and the president? And can the president uh, afford to lose a part of that base to Steve Bannon? I don't think so. The president didn't need Steve Bannon to win, and the president doesn't need Steve Bannon to be successful. Steve Bannon's uh, contribution to this is taking over a website that was created by a better guy and running it into the ground and making it a platform for the alt-right. Some commenters at this website are not going to be enough to bolster Steve Bannon's momentum. President Trump proved that he had a bigger nuclear button against Steve Bannon. You never go to war with a guy who will push back hard on you, and that's what we saw yesterday. Dana, we, had the, we were watching the press poll earlier. We've been showing clips of the press asking Sarah Huckabee Sanders about is he cavalier, is he demented, what's going on with his mental health. You have Joy Behar who says that he needs to be medicated and hospitalized. Listen to her comments and we'll get your reaction. Trump needs to be medicated and hospitalized <laughs> at this point or he is going to just kill all of us. And you know, my feeling is that probably they're getting closer to him in the Mueller investigation. And that's what this is about, a lot of it. What's your reaction? Oh, I think Joy Behar ought to be thanking God as we go into 2018 that Donald Trump is president because if he wasn't, what on earth would she talk about and why would people watch her? Uh, we only watch her because she says crazy, completely nutty things about the, the administration and about, I mean, really, she has nothing of substance to offer in terms of criticism about the president. And look at this. I mean, going into 2018, again, I just want to I just want to point everyone back to the fact that, you know, it was a very divided primary and it was a bitter general election. But this president has done a lot of things to bring people who were even most hesitant about him and about his abilities to the table and create, I think, one of the biggest tents that has been created in the Republican Party. And Joy Behar is terrified of that. All of them are, which is why they say things like this. So, no, I actually enjoy watching her go off. I think if anyone needs to be medicated, it should be her. <laughs> well, we're just a couple of days into the new year, Dana. And on New Year's Day, uh, Carson Wentz, who is the quarterback for Philadelphia, he posted an image on social media saying happy birthday to his dog, Mama Henley. He wrote, we've been through a lot in five years. Best dog and hunting buddy I could ask for. And as you can see right there, that is the dog is a puppy. Screen right, screen left is, uh, as you can see, they had uh, quite a good day hunting and there are a bunch of uh, dead geese right there that they got hunting a number of people uh, tweeted back to him hey we find that offensive and then he of course defended himself he said he loves Jesus he loves to hunt as well what do you think about this yeah I think it's insane that they're attacking Carson Wentz over this. And geese are delicious, by the way. I love the people attacking him. They love to pretend that they don't know where their food comes from. Carson Wentz goes to Whole Whole, whole, whole Foods. He likes to go to a supermarket. Whole he doesn't go to a supermarket. Foods. He goes to the, to the woods. That's his supermarket. Whole Whole Foods. He goes and he harvests his meat straight from the source. It is the healthiest, most sustaining thing that you can eat. That's what he does. And he has fun doing it. And the dog right. loves it. I mean, hello, the dog has a lot of fun doing this. But you so can't be surprised. Silly. That people are attacking him over this. Are you surprised, though? I'm not surprised at all because I know this country's divided no. when it comes to hunting. I, which is crazy because it shouldn't be. People shouldn't be divided over hunting. It is the healthiest way to harvest right. meat. And it's fun. It's a fun activity for families. And by the way, how do people think that their food gets in groceries? Do they realize that these are animals that they're eating in grocery stores? Somebody's and that when you them. go out and you harvest, people... Yeah, I mean, somebody, I mean, I mean, right, exactly. You're either going out to the woods to harvest your meat or you're raising them on a farm or in maybe perhaps a less sustainable way. But Carson Wentz, he's doing what Americans have done for generations. There's nothing wrong with it. I high five him. He had a good right. day. So did Mama Henley. All right. Uh, so Carson Wentz, who had a great season until his injury, uh, has at least one supporter for his recreational activities. <laughs> Anyways, thanks, last, Dana. thanks That's so much. Right.
That's and right. the Willie Robinson Good. family. The That's Robinson right. Family. We're gonna we're gonna we're getting that full screen ready right now. We're gonna show you the the Robinson family. We talked about it earlier. They weighed in on this, so stand by. We're getting that together. You mean the Duck Dynasty people? The Duck That's Dynasty right. family weighed in. Meanwhile, coming up, dreamers or a wall? Can there be both? The president and the Congress will meet today. A preview from the White House coming up next. I'm sure they'll have a deal. We are back with the latest on the monster snowstorm pounding the Northeast, causing whiteout conditions for millions. Yep, the severe weather doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon, but I'm not the weather guy. Steve, you would know. Uh, Corey Coffin from our Fox affiliate in D.C. is live in Ocean City, Maryland with the very latest. Corey? Yeah, good morning, guys. The sun just starting to come up, but you wouldn't really know it. It's extremely uh, still very, very dark conditions out here. Uh, the snow drifts so far, I'm kind of stuck in one right now, just to give you an idea of just how much this wind has been whipping through and bringing up the snow. It's uh, making for some difficult conditions for plowers out here as well. One good thing about Ocean City is that when it comes to winter storms, there are not a lot of people around. It is largely a seasonal town. Uh, one of the lone palm trees that remain out here getting just completely hammered with this pelting ice and snow. It's uh, packed in at this point. Uh, the, the wind is biting. The sleet that's coming in from the side is piercing to be sure. So, uh, so there's some extreme conditions out here, but for now, we'll send it back to you guys in the studio. That palm tree is an icicle. Corey, thank you very much for the live report. And I believe it was Corey who was shaking down the, the bike rider. A little yeah, while ago, right? It was a shakedown. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> All right. Turning now to our nation's capital. Hours from now, the president is going to sit down with Senate Republicans to discuss DACA and border security. Yeah, well, they want to get on the same page in order Those to present topics. their side against uh, Democrats. Those topics could be critical to pass a government spending package before the impending deadline. Peter Ducey is live outside the White House with the details. And this isn't an immigration negotiation yet because it is only Republicans making the slippery commute down Pennsylvania Avenue for a meeting with the president later on this afternoon, including the Senate's top vote counter, John Cornyn, then Senators Cotton, Graham, Grassley, Lankford, and Tillis. And they are huddling as Democrats start bearing down, demanding a new law to protect so-called dreamers who came to this country illegally as kids. It sounds like the president may ink a DACA deal into law in the next few weeks, but only if Democrats play ball with the wall. Sarah Sanders said that uh, they would like to make a deal for border funding as long as they can end chain migration, end the visa lottery program, and boost interior enforcement. But top of that list is border wall funding. And lawmakers also just got a letter signed by a handful of former Homeland Security secretaries, Jay Johnson and Janet Napolitano, who served under Obama, and then Michael Chertoff, who served under Bush. And they're writing Congress to make sure that lawmakers know that it takes Homeland Security officials a long time to implement new programs. So if they are going to fix DACA by the March deadline to either come up with a solution or deport all the dreamers, then they have to get moving right now. Back you're, to you. You're right about that. All right, uh, Peter Ducey live at the White House. Thank you very much. The president also talked about possibly going down to visit those wall uh, samples and picking the one that works best. Meanwhile, the president once said he'd love for Elizabeth Warren to run for president. I think she'd lose so badly.